All right, welcome back for more Lower Decks, Season 4. Uh, we're up to the fourth episode. Now, uh, last week we had a very fun episode with the civilization on the Bishop Ring, which I've recently learned about, uh, the sort of take on the Dyson Sphere. I don't know, I'm assuming the Dyson Sphere concept uh, preceded it. Uh, but it was a very fun episode, pretty much entirely Boimler-focused with Captain Freeman, and they had sort of paralleling arcs. Boimler was left in command of a group of ensigns, uh, and he was initially very unwilling to lay his trust in them, or he just was concerned about putting their lives in his hands, but he eventually overcame that thanks to the help of Tevin, uh, who was also becoming a great character. Uh, but Boimler ended up finding trust in, in the people he was commanding over, um, and then he died. <laughs> Boimler died in the episode, came back after he had a little bit of a run-in with the Space Koala, uh, which we which we've saw a lovely tease of once again, um, speaking backwards. And a few people mentioned in the comments, thank you, that uh, he did actually come face to face with death a few times. He nearly died several times, as other characters have as well, who have actually fully died and come back, like Shax, of course. Uh, but yeah, so it was a nice, pretty moment centric episode. Freeman's arc was also about her, you know, not trying to do everything herself and, and laying trust in her crew, which is something that she, she, she should have already been able to do. Uh, but again, I don't want to go on a rant about how much I uh, am not a fan of Freeman as a captain, but maybe that will change as time goes on. But uh, yeah, so we didn't get any really anything, I don't think at all, with Tendi, Mariner, uh, and Rutherford last episode, so probably this episode is going to be more focused on them and less on Bormler. But there's no point in guessing. Let's find out and get into it. Oh. What the hell kind of ship is this? So, oh, an Orion ship. So, yeah, we also didn't see anything of that uh, crazy ship that's been destroying all these different uh, different species, vessels, Klingons and Romulans. It just obliterated them. People are thinking it's Peanut Hamper and Badger teaming up. Probably. I support that theory. Um, oh, a TUS phaser. But, yeah, I, I guess... Uh, I don't know if we're going to be seeing more of that. Maybe not to the end of the season. We're gonna, this is just a little bit of a teaser we got early on. I'm stealing! Pirate steal! Uh, I think that makes you more of an Orion plagiarist. <laughs> Tactical nuke incoming! Tactical nuke incoming! <laughs> that was literally that sound effect. <laughs> Straight out of Mono for 2. Okay, so this... This weird vessel is back. Bizarre. What this thing is. It's gonna literally destroy you, so I would just run. Let's have some fun for once. They're right there. Captain, the vessel's speed is decreasing. See, this will be a quick pillage. Uh-uh. This ain't gonna be a quick pillage. It's gonna be a quick defeat. You're gonna be absolutely obliterated. How does it deactivate all their systems? That's so bizarre. Yep. Bye. God, that's intense. Just disintegrates them on the spot. I guess we're we just gonna, every episode, gonna get, see a different species. Maybe that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna see a different species. So we've seen Orion, Klingon, and Romulans now. Uh, if the Federation gets attacked, then maybe everybody will join up together to fight this threat. I don't know. Nothing? Oh, that can't be right. There's always something to do. Oh, one of the great things about being a Lieutenant JG is it's actually possible to finish your work. <laughs> nice. So there is, see, there is something good about being promoted, not just having more annoying things to do. is getting married. Congratulations. Wait, wedding? Wait, she was granted leave, mm -hmm. but uh, but she didn't request it. Did her sister request it, maybe? To come to her wedding? So good. We're going to see 10. I knew this was going to be a more uh, episode focused on a different character than Boimler, so it's a 10 focused episode, obviously. It just they haven't been home in so long. Plus, they want me to be in the ceremony, which means writing a speech. Ugh, and of course, they'll want photos of all of us in our belly dancer outfits. <laughs> Come on, dude, Talim's right. I mean, nobody knows anything about your culture. I have put my foot in my mouth enough when it comes to Orion stuff. We want to learn about the real you. But yeah, Tendi doesn't Tendi doesn't like her culture, really. <laughs> we learned all about that one, that other Orion, other Starfleet Orion guy in the DS9 episode. But she does have the uh, the pirate skills. 
but she likes to uh, to suppress her her heritage. Hell yeah! Triple threat, girls trip. I hope we will be allowed to view their aquifers. Ooh, okay. Wow. Okay, so Tendi, Tivin, and Marin are all going to Orion. This should be interesting. <laughs> Sometimes I shift around when I'm engineering in my dreams. Your squirming is so gentle, it actually lulls me to sleep faster. Ah, Rumi. Oh. Presence comforts me. They're so happy, roommate, best roommates. This is perfect. Exactly what should have happened. I'm so glad I did. Uh oh. I was just gonna give our bunzai here a little spritz. Uh, I was too. Little Boney loves a little watery hug in the morning. I've got an algorithm which tells me exactly how many ounces will be. I had to say it. Of course they're fighting over who gets to water the bonsai tree. <laughs> they're both so anal about their schedules and their everything they do in their life in their day. Man, this is going to be the first time we've gone to Orion in ages. I mean, we're on Have we ever been to Orion? We dealt with a lot of Orions in uh quite a bit in TOS and obviously Enterprise. Enterprise probably the most I don't think we ever went to the home world. <laughs> Fly, they're, they're literally. Greetings, mistress. May we take your bags? Hi, Sira. Yes, please. Ooh. Okay, they're immediately swashbuckling. So, is Tendi royal? Right. I mean, I know. Yeah, I know that the the women are actually the controller, or the 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 dominators in the culture. Um. So they have all these manservants. <laughs> Look, I am from a post-scarcity world, and this is still impressive. Look at that big ass gate! Oh no, I mean it's not that big. Wow, so the Orion culture really is prospering like crazy because of all because they're pirates, I guess? I mean, that's a bit scummy. Mariner, Talin, meet my parents, the warrior queen Shona, and Bert. <laughs> Can't stay silent any longer. Devana, the Eric has been kidnapped. Oh, what? No way. Bridal kidnappings are an Orion rite of passage. Hmm. Bridal kidnappings? <laughs> That's fucked. Brides are only abducted after say the Oh, never mind. So it, the invitation. it's against uh, ritual. Overreacting. As prime daughter, it's up to you to rescue your sister. What is a prime? I don't know, but it sounds cool as hell. <laughs> prime daughter. Is that like heir apparent? They're like sort of um, noblemen, maybe dukes or whatever, and they're, she's inheriting the dukedom, the duchy rather. Who's ready for a very standard, borderline boring Orion rescue mission? Let's do it. And then after, maybe we do those oil baths I keep hearing about. Rescue mission? How could that be boring? What a bizarre ritual they every time they're about to get married, somebody kidnaps the bride. <laughs> Maybe I guess to prove your prove your your love. Oh no way. Mark Twain. Sam Hill, are you aware? <laughs> oh, it's Portler. <laughs> say you are incorrect, sir. Oh please, show me a show me I can okay, right. Give me a cameo, Whoopi Goldberg, right now, please. It'd be amazing. Which costumes, you ignominious pretender? You're more stubborn than a senate mule. Grab, scrap, scrap! I see. So this is the more grungy side of Orion culture in the cities, maybe. And because Tendi's family is so wealthy, they live in the country away from the muck. Mistress of the Winter Constellations. What is what is Tendi's deal here? She's she's like so prestigious. I'm thinking that she's got to be royal, right? The hell was that? What the hell is what the fuck is that? Hey. I thought the Tendi said class. I don't care what you think. Just what you know. I've heard some whispers, but you'll have to earn them. What is this? It's like a bizarre drinking game? Like Orion beer pong or something? Huh. Oh dear. 
Uh... Oh, look at that. Oh, that's pretty funny, actually. They have to drink to keep themselves from being bitten. That's, kind of, that's a funny little idea. <laughs> I'm so confused at what the dynamic is here with, with Tendi and her and her uh, other culture, other people of her culture, rather. It is kind of similar to Billups, I guess, how he was part of a royal house and didn't want anything to do with it and left to join Starfleet. For some reason, when we're both Mark Twain, we seem to be able to really find common ground without any lingering resentment. <clears throat> uh, I mean, uh, to paraphrase the old rail splitter. <laughs> This is so ridiculous. Imagine the actors in the uh, recording booth doing this. <laughs> they must have had so much fun. I am Mark Twain. Ooh, pretty nice hump dungeon. I think they have one of those in New Seattle. Hump dungeon. Good lord. <laughs> Taken out by some Orion showgirls. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Blast me with more moans. <laughs> <laughs> Blast me with more moans. Okay, so people were trying to disprove the uh, the Orion pheromone thing with the females, but obviously that's not true. It does happen. Get back here! I got some speed for being a big old hunk of ham steak. He is aesthetically pleasing. Wow, Tevin. Aesthetically pleasing. Never thought you'd say it. Why are you threatening one of my most obedient boys? Relax, have a drink, get lascivious. I'm not interested. This is Ursula from Little Mermaid. <laughs> it's got a similar look. They've never mattered that she didn't have the pheromones. She didn't need it. Men would simply mm. fall at her feet, stricken. You strict people? Oh, she's blushing. So she, she doesn't have the pheromones, but she was still manipulative. Why? Because she was just so she was so confident. Oh, I thought it turned them like human. Their heads human for a second because like their color changed. So she has anti pheromone spray. <laughs> over to the moans. Last time she was just wandering around the ship graveyard. All right, that makes sense. So, De Erica was in love with this guy and then she ran off with somebody else that I'm understanding. Okay. Your vessel will interfere with our data gathering. We can power down systems or share the data. We don't trust Starfleet data. Is this guy a species we know because he looks very familiar to me? Is it? I was gonna say he's Noskin. He's not Noskin. What is he? Uh, Captain. Uh, there is one thing. What? <laughs> Why am I wearing this itchy hat? <laughs> Look at Freeman. <laughs> is it? No, we have to talk to each other. <laughs> this is so dumb. I love it. He's got the, his pants are ripped because they're too small. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> what a brilliant diplomatic technique. Do the twain. Well, that uh, blew up pretty quick. Yeah, ridiculous that you thought that this would work. <laughs> Guys, come on. Eric and I used to sneak away here when we were little. There, that was one of our favorites. Is that a Starfleet shuttle? Looks a bit like, kind of like a runabout or something. Oh. I wasn't just a regular Orion teenager. I was trained to be a syndicate assassin. Tendi, yeah, we know, girl. You can't okay. just say you're joking around when you kick flip a knife out of the air. Yeah. Well, it's obvious that uh, 
she wasn't just your average Orion. So she was trained to be a syndicate assassin. But it doesn't really explain why everybody like worships her though, just because she's an assassin. The most piratey someone can be. I guess, okay, they just have a lot of immense amount of respect for her because of their sort of, their pirate-based culture, as she said. That's like the top tier. It's so weird to be here. This is where I told my sister that I was joining Starfleet. More like where you decided to abandon your family. Here she is. To Erica. Well, she looks like a samurai. <laughs> or a ninja or something, yeah. So she obviously stayed as an assassin. <laughs> in the same spot. <laughs> I don't know, Tendi. It just seems like Orions usually do result to violence. Beautiful. We love it too. Super hard to raise. Yeah, he's basically a son to us. Every day we have to make sure he gets just the right amount of. Oh. He ate. He ate the freaking bonsai tree. Well, it worked. He gave them permission to inspect the nebula. <laughs> and they're so upset about the tree. <laughs> Little bony. Get a new tree. Why don't you each get a tree? So you don't have to fight over the one. They have the same freckles. <laughs> so is that how her family is so rich from being prosperous assassins? I'm assuming. But her parents seem so nice. How could they be assassins? The new prime. What is this prime? It's just like, is it just the ultimate assassin that like, that leads them all? The queen assassin? But I'm no Devon attendee. You just kicked my butt. You're an amazing prime. I guess I did kick it a little bit. A lot of it. So Derica was just a little concerned that she was going to be revealed as not being as awesome as her sister when she got married. But that clearly isn't true. She's, she's extremely badass as... As uh, Talyn said, impressive combat ability. It is a Federation ship. But it's not a runabout, it's some weird looking thing. Curious. My report appears to have been damaged. Orion culture will have to remain undocumented. I really like Talyn, she's awesome. Vulcans could be hit or miss, I think. Sometimes they're amazing, sometimes they piss me off. But here, she's awesome. Ha <laughs> ah, Found her! Sorry, sorry, had to steal a ship. <clears throat> what a way to show up at your wedding. Crashing a ship. And walking in all beaten up. What beautiful scenery. Beautiful wedding. <laughs> this is when we encounter the priest with an eight pack. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And uh, this is when De Erica swung her husband across the threshold. <laughs> yeah, well, our bones. <laughs> A priest with an eight pack. <laughs> that totally deadpan dry delivery gets me every time. <laughs> ooh, like today we were arguing about whether to hang an oil painting of the Enterprise D or a watercolor of the Enterprise D. Well, you guys just talked about your feelings. With I would do an oil painting. More uh, detailed representation of the of the day. Exceptional compromise, Mozart. <laughs> so at least they found a new way to uh, to iron out their issues. Not that they have that many, because they are good friends. But it's difficult having roommates. Okay, that was the fourth episode of Lower Deck Season Four. Something borrowed, something green. Um, 
quickly, I just noticed in while I was watching the credits, Ariel Winter was uh, the voice of Derica, um, who is Alex from Modern Family. If you've, if you've watched that brilliant show, uh, that's a fun little thing. And Nolan North was was also in the episode. He's, I noticed he's been appearing in a couple of episodes this season. I, I didn't know if he was in the first three seasons, but he's a very very famous voice actor. Uh, yeah, so it's nice to get bringing in some uh, some new people to have uh, guest stars, which is fun. But yeah, that was a very fun episode. As I said before, I was expecting a, a episode that was more focused on one of the other characters, and we got a Tendi centric episode, which is among the first. Um, you know, she's been trying to disprove all the uh, stereotypes about Orion culture, but here we see that they are pretty much all true. Um, but you know, Talyn deleted her, threw away her report so that Starfleet's going to still remain believing that those stereotypes are wrong. So that's good. Um, but yeah, the whole pheromone thing with the women controlling the men is all true. Uh, seeing Orion, I, like I said, I don't think we've ever actually been to the planet Orion. So it was cool to see beautiful scenery. I mean, it's 2D animation, but it's still very cool. Um, and the underworld sort of uh, Coruscant looking area in the city was awesome. Um, and yeah, so we, we basically we, we got we learned about Tendi's upbringing and the fact that she was raised to be an assassin. Um, she was the prime daughter, meant to be the, the top of the top of the assassin hierarchy, and, and that's because you know, Orions are pirates. Assassins are essentially above that in the in the uh, caste system or whatever you call it, Orion. And then you know she's the top of that, or was meant to be. But then her daughter, Der- her daughter, her sister, Derica, replaced her, um, and held a bit of a grudge for that, thinking that there was so much pressure left on her, even though she she did want to. She was jealous of Tendi to some degree, but she you know thought she couldn't necessarily live up to her. But that was disproven, and uh, all was made well by the end with the with a wonderful wedding. Um, learning a little bit about Orion culture is very cool, quite a bit actually, about Orion culture and their sort of a bizarre rituals. I shouldn't say bizarre, different rituals. Uh, and we also saw a bit more of a, a little bit of conflict with uh, Mer- uh, uh, Boimler and Rutherford about uh, their their new room situation because I, I was so happy that they have a room together now because that's that's perfect. It's almost like just things haven't changed too much from when they were lower deckers or ensigns. Um, but of course, they were fighting over, over watering the bonsai tree, which you know, they, and they sorted that out by pretending to be Mark Twain. Both of them pretending to be Mark Twain, which was very funny. Um, hoping for a little Whoopi Goldberg cameo, but that, that would have been too much. That wouldn't have really made any sense, but uh, it would have been a funny little gag. Um, yeah, and then we saw them as Mozart at the end. So, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, they've they've sort of ironed out their issues for a bit. And um, and there's that weird uh, the other alien who was giving them a bit of, giving Freeman a hard time about searching, uh, scanning the nebula investigating nebula and then uh, he was he was won over by tasting the bonsai tray and crushing the souls of, <laughs> of crushing the hearts of uh, Baumler and Rutherford but yeah it was, this was a fun episode um, not as chaotic as the last episode um, but it was nice character centric episode and uh, you know, I think it, it's it was Tendi's whole thing was she was very much trying to suppress any knowledge of her past to everybody and now she's opened up to at least her friends not she hasn't know it's not been filed about her, but um, she, her friends know the truth, and they kind of already suspected, and they admitted that you know you can't go kick an ass without us knowing, you know, suspecting you have a you know, you weren't just some you know some regular Orion, you were something special, and she was. So it's interesting that uh, how just contrasting her personality is, you know, you wouldn't expect someone so nice, so personable to be a master assassin. But uh, it seems like uh, she was raised by a very, a very good, very kind family. Uh, her parents seem to be seem to be funny. Uh, maybe we'll see more of them as, uh, as time goes on. But it was just a, it would, definitely the highlight for me was seeing Orion. Um, I thought it was extremely cool. But a great episode. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Leave a like if you haven't already, and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I will see you for the next episode.